Welcome back. So we've been talking about the Fourier transform and Fourier series and how you can use these to solve partial differential equations. And I want to give an example uh, of the heat equation. So this is actually how Fourier devised the Fourier transform was to solve the heat equation. So I'm going to work through this a little bit now, and we're going to have some other examples uh, later to go a little bit more into depth on how to derive the heat equation, uh, how the Fourier transform is an eigen decomposition or a, a change of coordinates into eigenvectors uh, of the Laplacian operator that's in the heat equation. We'll talk about that later. Uh, we'll also have a bunch of MATLAB and Python codes where we simulate these PDEs uh, using the Fourier transform, using the fast Fourier transform, which is how you do this on a computer. Uh, but here I just want to walk you through kind of some of the steps that are involved in analyzing a PDE uh, using the Fourier transform. Okay. And so um, how do I want to think about this? So I'm going to have, I guess I should write down some problems. So uh, the heat equation we're going to say is uh, ut equals some positive constant. I'm going to call this alpha squared because I don't want to have like negative heat diffusion. uxx, okay, so this is uh, a 1D heat equation. This is the 1D heat equation. And the way you can think about this is that you have kind of an infinite, maybe like a thin piece of metal, a 1D piece of metal with some initial heat distribution that we're going to call u at x at time zero. U of all of space at time zero is my initial temperature distribution, okay? And as x goes to plus and minus infinity, this thing is gonna have to die off to zero. Uh, otherwise, this would have infinite heat energy, which is non-physical. Okay, so I have some initial temperature distribution. I'm assuming that that temperature eventually will, will die out to zero at plus and minus infinity so that I don't have infinite temperature, uh, infinite heat energy in this thin, uh, 1D piece of metal, and this is my uh, my governing equation. This is the heat equation, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to Fourier transform this, uh, this equation, and we're going to show that it's actually very easy to solve this. This is a partial differential equation in space and time, but when we Fourier transform, we're going to get a simple ordinary differential equation out. Okay, that's what I'm going to show you. So uh, let's do this, and I just want to remind you that um, Remember, u is a function of x and t. And so if I Fourier transform this function of uh, x and t, I'm Fourier transforming, I can choose space or time, but I'm going to Fourier transform with respect to space, okay, because space is my, uh, my coordinate that goes to negative infinity and positive infinity. Usually we think of time as starting at zero and going to positive infinity. So space uh, is kind of a, a two-sided infinite variable. And so if I Fourier transform with respect to space, I'm going to get this u hat of omega and t. Good. Okay. Um, and of course, remember that the derivative of uh, u with respect to x, if I take f of um, ux, so d dx of u, then I'll get an i omega u hat and if I take f of u x x, I'll get two i omegas out. I'll get an i omega squared, which is a minus omega squared u hat. Okay, good. So that's that nice property of the Fourier transform that the Fourier transform of derivatives is just i omega times that Fourier transform. Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transform this, uh, this u PDE in U using these uh, Fourier transform rules, okay? And maybe I'll be super explicit. This U hat is still a function of omega and T. So my time variable didn't change. Remember, I'm just Fourier transforming with respect to space, okay? <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to Fourier transform this with respect to space. So we're going to Fourier transform. And what we're going to get is um, DDT of U hat equals, now the Fourier transform of uxx is just minus omega squared u hat. So I'm going to have a minus omega squared alpha squared u hat. Good. And this is really nice. This is a function of omega and t, and this is a function of omega and t. This is no longer a partial differential equation. This is just an ordinary differential equation with a time derivative equals some function. 
And for each omega, if I lock in omega, this is just a function of time. And it's a normal, ordinary differential equation in time for each fixed omega. Okay, that's the key here. So now <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to, to solve this ODE in time. That's actually quite simple. So I can say that u hat of omega at some future time t is just e to the minus omega squared alpha squared t times u hat of omega at an initial time t naught. This is just how you solve an ODE. u at some time t is e to the lambda t times u at time naught, at time zero. Okay, this is just the normal way of solving an ODE. And just think about how much simpler this is than solving the full PDE, right? You could use, I don't know, um, some PDE method to solve this, but by Fourier transforming, we just get an ODE for every fixed value of omega. So we get a family of ODEs for every omega, and this is the solution, okay? Now this is kind of cool. This is a Gaussian function, okay? This is a, maybe I'll, I'll change my colors a little bit. So this is um, a Gaussian kernel, so a Gaussian. Uh, and essentially what we can do, this is the product u hat at omega and t is the product of two functions of omega. Okay, so this is like f hat and g hat. And remember, if we inverse Fourier transform f hat times g hat, the inverse Fourier transform is just the convolution of the two inverse Fourier transforms. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. So what we actually want, we don't want the solution in Fourier coordinates. We want the solution in, in physical coordinates. We want to know what the final time heat distribution is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to map back uh, to original coordinates. We're going to say u of x and t is equal to the inverse Fourier transform of u hat omega and t which is going to be equal to the inverse Fourier transform of this Gaussian, this uh, e to the minus omega squared alpha squared t convolution integral with the inverse Fourier transform of u hat omega naught. But this u hat omega naught is just the Fourier transform of my initial temperature distribution. So the inverse Fourier transform of this initial temperature distribution in Fourier coordinates is just my initial temperature distribution in regular space coordinates. So convolution with u uh, of x at time zero, my initial condition. And here's where it gets kind of interesting. So the inverse Fourier transform of a Gaussian is another Gaussian. That's a, a property you can derive using the Fourier transform integral. You can plug this in and show that your inverse Fourier transform is another Gaussian. So this is essentially another Gaussian uh, in x and t. I'm just going to write a Gaussian in x and t. Convolution with my initial condition, my initial condition. Okay, And what's interesting is that as time goes on, Again, you'll have to work this out. Um, I probably can actually write out roughly what this Gaussian looks like. This Gaussian is something like um, 1 over 2 alpha square root of pi t uh, e to the minus x squared over 4 alpha squared t, something like that. And so what this means is that as time goes on, as, as time gets bigger and bigger, as time goes on with this initial condition, this Gaussian gets more and more and more spread out. So I'll just write this out. Okay, so I start out with a very, very sharp Gaussian. And as time goes on, this Gaussian spreads out and gets fatter and fatter and fatter and more and more diffuse. Okay, so this is called a diffusion kernel. Diffusion kernel. Okay, and essentially what we're doing is we're taking our initial condition and we're convolving it with a diffusion kernel. So we take this diffusion kernel and we slide it across and take the dot product and we smooth out this distribution. It gets smoother and smoother and smoother. And the more time passes, the wider 
this diffusion kernel gets and the more it smooths out the features in my initial temperature distribution. So even if I had an initial temperature distribution that had some big spikes in it, very, very rapidly, this Gaussian is gonna smooth those out and blend them into their neighbors. Okay, so that's what the heat equation does. That's why it's called the heat equation or the diffusion equation, is essentially it takes initial conditions, initial distributions, and it convolves them with a Gaussian that gets fatter and fatter in time. Okay, and that's particularly easy to see when we work in the Fourier transform coordinates. Okay, so we Fourier transform in space, our PDE becomes an ODE that's much, much easier to work with. So we can solve that ODE using, you know, standard methods and ODEs. And what we now see is that in the Fourier transform domain, it's the product of our initial condition with a Gaussian. Okay. And when we inverse Fourier transform, we get another Gaussian that's convolution integral with our initial condition. And that Gaussian just gets spread and spread and spread out more and more and more over time. So that at, at final time, as time goes to infinity, this distribution will eventually go and get spread out uh, to zero. Okay, everything will cool out to infinity. Okay, so just one example of how you can use the Fourier transform uh, to work with PDEs to turn PDEs into ODEs. We're also going to use the fast Fourier transform. This is like the regular integral Fourier transform. We're going to use the fast Fourier transform to do this on uh, in computers to solve these numerically. Okay, so we're going to do a lot of that in MATLAB and Python. All right, thank you.